Hi, this is Robert McCune, and this is AEP 855, Module 4, um, dealing with CASA accreditation. I actually teach in the state of Missouri, and so uh, I'm going to be looking more at MSIP 5, which stands for the Missouri School Improvement Plan, um, and this is the fifth cycle that that is on. Uh, we are nearing the end of that cycle, and so in the next couple of years, uh, we'll see a transition probably to MSIP 6, so um, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with that. Um, MSIP 5 is broken down into five different categories. One is academic achievement, and at the high school level, this is through end of course exam scores um, in uh, math and science and uh, ELA and also in social studies. Um, category two is subgroup achievement. Um, this looks at different racial and ethnic groups, uh, ELL and free and reduced lunch, and how they score on those um, end of course exams. Uh, college and career readiness is the third category. Uh, this takes into account the ACT, uh, ASVAB, as well as um, International Baccalaureate, which is a program that we have in our school, uh, advanced placement, uh, the different TSA programs, and then whether or not students attend the military after high school. Uh, the last two categories are attendance rate and graduation rate. Um, in order to receive full points uh, in those two categories, you need to get 90% attendance and then 92% of students need to graduate. Um, through all that, um, the state has uh, come up with a formula where there are 140 points possible to be accredited with, this, with distinction, which uh, my school, North Kansas City High School, always strives to achieve. Uh, a school needs to have 90% of those 140 points. Last year, um, we received 94% of those possible, so we were a school uh, that was accredited with distinction, and our district is accredited with distinction. Um, improvements that can be made uh, in those different categories, obviously academic achievement, because you can always can work on improving uh, the different levels of your scores. Um, but what I'll focus on later is subgroup performance and attendance rate. Um, and going through this, I thought it was uh, interesting and in going through with my assistant principal, um, the different MSIP 5 uh, and how it correlates. But I also reached out to a colleague who I used to teach with and now works for the Kansas Department of Education. Uh, and we talked to, through a couple of the uh, R's that were mentioned, uh, responsive culture and how it applied to my school in particular. Um, and I think um, we have a very strong voice through our students, through our student council. Um, so there's a strong student to teacher voice, but I think there's a gap uh, between administration and the students as there's no systematic way for students to collaborate with administration. Um, so I think that's something that could be worked on. Uh, relationships, there's a gap between ELL, SPED, free and reduced lunch families. Uh, they're not as strongly engaged, um, which is in contrast to the parents of um, IB, AP, um, and students who participate in athletics, those parents seem to be more engaged uh, in their students. The principal's philosophy, uh, most certainly democratic style leadership, sometimes to a fault. Uh, he delegates to his administrators um, and lets them play on their strengths. Um, they are, in contrast to him, they're much more of a leader member exchange style of leadership. Um, principal is rarely seen throughout the school and he delegates duties and allows teachers um, some freedoms in their classrooms. Some have issues with this because they want to be told what to do and how to do things and don't like the freedom um, where others absolutely love the freedom. And then finally, areas to improve. Uh, in looking at our school improvement plan, uh, increase, increase subgroup performance. Uh, this becomes difficult as lower scoring students tend to have the least amount of support uh, at home. Uh, to fix this, uh, I would implement after school tutoring sessions visiting with parents through a variety of means that are in-person or through technology, continue to relate the information to what students are interested in, finding cultural relevant, culturally relevant textbooks or different um, things that they can read, um, and then maybe change class offerings. Uh, two standards I would address through this are standard one, the mission, vision, and core values, and standard three, equity and cultural responsiveness. I think both of those hit on increasing subgroup performance because at the heart, you need to, as an administrator or anyone in education, you need to find something that engages all students. 
Uh, and then finally, increase attendance rate, implement a positive behavioral system to encourage students to come to school, engage in activities, um, and increase students, uh, has proven to increase student attendance. Um, and then through this would be standard five, uh, community of care and support for students. Um, this would allow them to um, want to come to school and have a reason for them to come to school. All right, thank you.